Still our big chip leader at this final table with five players left, but really say it's anybody's game. Oh, you're right, Mike. It's battle of wits and here tonight. Very clever poker players going at it for a title at the Legends of Poker. It is up for grabs. This will definitely be an exciting finish. Please join us next time when we crown the Legends of Poker champion at the Bicycle Casino. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone here at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time. The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Since the inaugural season of the WPT, 11 players have staked their claim as legends at the Bicycle Casino. Who will be number 12? The dramatic conclusion of the Legends of Poker is happening tonight on the WPT. to the WPT's coverage of The Legends of Poker. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. After six days of hard-fought competition, we are close to crowning a new WPT champion. Tonight, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues, Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Guys, with the finish line now in sight, how do you see the action playing out? Well, Ryan going to in command. He's the chip leader right now with five players left. But all the other players have got over a couple million in chips, so really, it's anybody's game, and whoever wants it the most, fights the most for the pots, I think we'll take home this title. Thanks, Mike. And Vince, who's your pick to hoist the WPT Champions Cup in victory tonight? Well, you know, I'm just guessing, but uh, I'll have to go with Phil Locke. You know, he's the Unabomber. He's a tough player. It's been a few years since he took a WPT title. He's overdue. Maybe it's his night tonight. Well, guys, this should be quite the battle with over $600,000 and the WPT Champions Cup on the line. Looks like the action is about to get underway, so let's check the chip counts and head to the table. Well, there you can see Ryan Goendu from Trinidad, now living in L.A., well out in front with about $8 million in chips. The youngster at the table, Jordan Christos, in second place with just over $5 million. All right, Andy's at $25,000, blinds are seventy-five, one fifty. Ryan going to the local, plays a lot of cash games and tournaments. He folds his hand now, Dan Highmiller, also a local. 20-year tournament pro. He's got a raise with 8-7, Mike, 425 to go. Jordan Christos out. That's on Alex Masix. Alex, a 28-year-old professional poker player. He's going out. Okay, it's on to Phil Locke, the Unabomber. He's the goggle man tonight, Vince. He's got a six, and he's going to fold. Just like that, they respect Dan Highmiller. So Dan Highmiller taking down that pot. But right now, let's get a little more insight into the man himself, Phil Locke. The things that I love about poker are very simple. One, you the uh, characters you meet are varied and wide would be an understatement. And two, uh, it satisfies a lot of man's primal need for uh, returning to something, which is a direct uh, feeling of uh, autonomy, some power control over what's going on, something that's complex enough to hold our attention. We're all pushing the web of consciousness. The plasma state is just as exciting as the real thing. The more you go down the rabbit hole and tendril around and see the dark and the lit and the weird corners. Now it's a state of a thousand million things. Infinite, it's an infinite. Like in judo, how you take the other guy's force and you flip with it. The only class I got an A in, well, it was two. Trampoline doesn't really count, though. I don't know, it's just, it's good, it's... <sighs> you caught me off guard. I don't know what to say after that. What was the question? <laughs> I think about it, like... Oh, perhaps he just stayed a little too long at the reggae concert. That's our Phil Locke. Uh, the guy is beautiful, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. What a he is out there and everybody loves him. All right. Right now, first place going to take home 613,000 as we have five players battling for this championship. What is it? But back to the table, Dan with a quick fold. Over to Jordan. Jordan Christos, the 26 year old pro. Looks down at a pair of queens, the ladies. 
What a hand to get at this moment. And he makes it 350 to go. Yeah, he's got the Unabomber sweatshirt on himself here a little bit. Alex out. And now Phil Locke oh, with an ace eight. Uh, don't get into trouble here. Oh, boy. Oh, he's going to do it. Holy guacamole. All in for $3.7 million here. Call. Jordan has more chips than he does. Makes a snap call. Do you have me covered? And right now, Phil Locke knows he is up against it. Well, he has plunged ahead. Little did he know that Jordan has the queen. This has got to be close to right, right? No, it's too aggressive. I'm surprised at this play by Phil Locke. He could have three bet to 700,000 if the guy moves in. Throwing his hand away and still had three million left, which is more than two guys at the table here. But right now, he is all in for a monster pot up against two queens with just an ace-eight offsuit. A well, possible error by Phil, but you never know. He's a dog, and the flop comes up seven-six-four. So he's got an inside straight draw now, or the ace, of course. Right now, Jordan out in front with the ladies. Well, that's Phil's girlfriend over there, Jennifer Tilly, quite a player herself, along with Perlod Friedman, his buddy, who's a former winner of this tournament, trying to root him in here. Oh, wow, another queen. Three queens for Jordan. The Unabomber really needs the miracle. Well, they must catch a five on the river to make it straight. Nothing else will do. WPT champion Phil Locke in loads of trouble. He is circling the drain at this moment. And the river card is a three of clubs. Well, Vance just overplayed his hand. I'm sure he'll be the first one to tell you. Well done, buddy. This wasn't meant to be for Phil tonight. Out in fifth place. Devastation for Phil Locke. He's packing it up. I should have made it like a million or so. Yeah. So Phil Locke out of here in fifth place. Going to take home 109,000 and his personality. He's always fun to watch. Let's go see what he has to say. As much as I'm married to the idea of just play well, do your best, whatever, yeah, you get close and you're like, oh, well, you can start smelling. You can smell the blood, you know? So, yeah, I smelt it a little, but it didn't happen. That's all good, you know? I've got friends, family, and I got a 105 lump in. I did two bullets, that's uh, like around 7,500, and I made 105 something. So they want to make the walk of shame even tougher. Hey, it's been a while since we've talked to you, yeah. <laughs> I like it. I like it, you know? You got a job as a poker player. Come on in, you know? Oh, well, he's always smiling. You got to love his attitude, Vince. Win, lose, or draw. The guy is always happy-go-lucky. And right now, Jordan Christos way out in front with nine million in chips. Here we go. Four players remain. Action on Jordan. And Jordan's going to take a look down at a queen nine off suit. He's got the rush going here right now. Yeah, he's also got the chip lead which means he can bully guys around, and he's going to do it right here, raising it to 300000 Right next to him, Alex Masick, the poker pro, has a law degree from San Diego Law School. Well, right now, Alex is on the short stack, but opts not to play the ace high here. Ryan also out, and Dan can't compete, so Jordan Christos with just queen nine going to bully his way through that pot. The WPT has a rich history of showcasing emerging poker talent. And this season, we turn our attention to a fresh batch of players who have what it takes to light up the poker scene. Let's meet our new ones to watch. We're the ones to watch. Yeah, I'm the guy. If you need something, I got it. <laughs> Ladies love money too, you know? <laughs> Sometimes things go your way. I'm kind of the life of the party anywhere I go. <laughs> Poker is everything to me. It's my passion. It's the thing that I was meant to do. Hope we got a shot at this. Poker, it's life, man. Probably the best job ever. You're just giving me chips. I love that I'm my own boss, and I think poker can give me everything I want, a house, and hopefully take care of my family. It's a very fun game. It stimulates the mind, it gives me some freedom, it allows me to travel. Went to New York, Montreal, or London, then afterwards, you guys in Paris. Pretty blessed. Yeah, lucky man, for sure. 
the end of the day, I think that's what's most important in life is being able to do what you want and what you love. And poker allows me to do that. I'm excited. I'm playing really well, and I feel good. So it uh, should be a fun season. Everything I'd ever done my entire life just kind of groomed me to be in a place when I found poker. It just felt really, really right when I sat down for the first time. And I don't know, I never looked back. I feel honored that you chose me to be at once to watch. It's fun to be one, but uh, I'm not sure. Why did you choose me as a one to watch? Maybe it's my name. It's really long and fun to say. I'm always there. I'm always ready. And I'm always looking to have a good time. I like to think I have a good sense of humor and, and just kind of bring the energy up for everyone. Probably my personality and my swagger. You guys pick me to be ones to watch. I think I'm the most entertaining player in poker right now. I ain't folding I think I'm a one to watch because I'm feisty. I'm kind of the life of party. Anywhere I go, I'm a little crazy. I'm actually very shy, so there's be a lot of times you'll see me at the poker table and I'm not exactly what everybody wants to see because I'm really just focusing in and, and trying to win. The whole cast of this Ones to Watch, it's a great cast. You have great personalities, great players. You've got characters, you've got swag. It's gotta be the best cast that, that I've seen on the World Poker Tour. Well, Vince, we got a good group of ones to watch this season on the World Poker Tour. Yes, we do. But right now we have four players battling for this championship at the Legends of Poker. This is the event that Doyle Brunson was our champion a few years back. Who will it be tonight? Now, well, action's on Alex Masick. He goes out. Former chip leader Ryan Goen do with an ace eight. Well, this hand was the demise of Phil Locke. Let's see what happens to Ryan. He's gonna pop it up to 300,000 to go. Dan Highmiller. Right behind with a king queen. Well, Dan's going to make the call. Wants to see a flop. And chip leader Jordan says, "I'm priced in. I'll slop around." Sure is. Eight hundred fifty thousand in the pot. Cost him one hundred fifty to make the call. So he's definitely there. Here comes the flop. Who will be lucky? No one. Ten, nine, five, all diamonds. Well, Ryan has a diamond. And the check by Dan and Jordan. And Ryan not getting aggressive, not going to make the continuation bet. He checks as well. The turn card's a nine, pairs the board. And again, Dan checks. Jordan doesn't make a stab at this pot. He also checks. Now you got to think Ryan's going to push here. Protect his hand. You may think he can just check it down and have the best hand, Vince. And the river card is a jack. That makes it straight for Dan. That's why you can't check those down. Well, a million in the pot. Dan going to bet 300000 with his straight. Jordan out. Begging for a call, and Ryan scoots away. So the poker player, Dan Heimiller, taking down the pot. Former pizza guy. He is doing it here tonight. And right now, the pizza could be on him. Stick around to hear what Tony Dunst has to say about tonight's action in the Raw Deal when the WPT Legends of Poker continues. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're gonna love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. I'm Danielle, one of the Royal Flush Girls. You're watching season 12 of the WPT. The future couldn't be any brighter for the Bicycle Casino. The hotel will be a first-class property, very upscale and elegant with the contemporary style. It will feature over 100 guest rooms, exclusive VAP open-air gaming area, restaurants, and a host of other amenities. The most important thing, we will now be able to offer a place where our guests can stay and play. Welcome back to the Bicycle Casino and the Legends of Poker, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. And Vince, how about this tournament this week? We had 716 entrants in this event. That was a very big field, very exciting. You know, who's going to become the next legend here at the bike? But there was one player, Martin Aganov. He's from Glendale, California, and uh, he got pretty lucky here. Yeah, Martin got a chance to mix it up with all the pros on the green felt right here at the bike, all because he won his seat on clubwpt.com. Exactly, it's a great, great site. Now, he didn't make the money in this particular tournament, but he had a great time, he competed, and on top of that, he hung out with the Royal Flush Girls and had a ball. Check it out, sign up today, clubwpt.com, 
Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Back to the table we go. Four players competing for this championship here tonight. And the Annies are going up to 25,000. The blinds are 100 and 200,000, Mike. Getting steep. Well, indeed it is. Huh? Action going to be the, 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 Ryan Guendo. He quickly folds. And now Dan Highmiller has picked up an ace nine. In a four-handed poker game, pretty strong. He's getting out raising chips. And he's on the button. Yep, he's going to make it 525 to go. Into the chip leader, Jordan. And he puts back on the sunglasses, or I should say the red glasses. Jordan taking his time to peek, and he looks in a miserable hand. 8-3 of hearts. They call him JC. He's a local as well. Only 26 years old. I mean, look at all the signs we got in the crowd tonight. we we got Christos Nation out there. I've heard of Red Sox Nation and all these things, but now we got Poker Player Nations. Well, finally, he's going to fold that mess. And. Acting like he hated to let it go, that's for sure. I think I've been nuts. Alex now with a nothing hand going to fold. I had to be. Fold as well. I don't want to lose, you lose any sleep over it. I was on my way to, but you saved me. Dan Miller with about 3.5 in chips. I'm taking your mojo, bro. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. More shades. Yep. It's over for you. It only works for one person. No, it would work for me. It just means like way too much for you. We're connected. Me and these glasses are connected. Alex wanted to try on some of those red sunglasses. See if they'll work for him like they're doing for Jordan. Four players remain. We had 716 entries originally as we go down the stretch here at the Bicycle Casino. Action on Dan High Miller. He's out. Yeah, Jordan got the Doyle Brunson hand, a former champion of this event, but he opts to fold. So it's the battle of the blinds here. Alex looks down at Jack Nine of Hearts. Actually, I mean, I've looked at the payouts. I know what first place is. I don't, I don't know what the rest of the payouts are, and I don't even know what I'm guaranteed right now. I'll keep my eye on first place for now. So Alex, well, he sees an opportunity here. He is going to push all in 1.9 million. Just hoping against hope that Ryan doesn't pick up anything. But Ryan has picked up an ace high. How much? Well, even with ace deuce, no matter what your opponent has, the best you can probably be is like a dollar fifty favorite. Because he's going to have two middle cards somewhere, at least. He's got an ace, you're dominated. But Mike, he is going to call, and he loves it. Well, Alex can't swallow a BB right now. Ace, ace, ace. He's got a jack nine. Ace. We need an ace. Ryan, go and do it. High fiving anyone that'll touch him. Alex is saying, What did I do? First card, I look down at Deuce, and I'm like, I'm going to have to fold. Then I see an ace. I'm like, I have no choice. Ryan liking his position. He's a favorite going into the flop. Here we go. Jack, 6 4. So right on the flop, Ryan shakes his head as his opponent flops a pair of jacks. Bingo, bango. Ryan looking for a bongo, meaning an ace. Well, yep, he needs to get lucky now. Yeah. Alex in front, but an ace oh, appears! There it is, an ace right on the turn. Oh, come on, Ryan! <laughs> Ryan Goindu, looks like his stack is going to go into right up. <laughs> what a catch on the turn. Well, Alex knows he has to catch a jack or a nine on the river to stay alive in this tournament. No, oh, he's stunned. Can he do it? No, it's a five of diamonds. So just like that, the 28-year-old Alex Masick out in fourth place. Good game, man. Vince, when I watch this tournament from a couple tables down to the final table, Alex was the general. He was in command, raised nearly every pot. At this final table, it didn't happen. I'll see you next one. Finally moved all them with Jack Nine of Hearts and ends up going out in fourth place. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I feel like I gained a lot of confidence playing in this field, and I definitely felt like it was a you know great tournament to play in. So hopefully I'll be playing a lot more this season. So with Alex Masic out in fourth place, who will take down the prestigious Legends of Poker title? We'll be right back with more action from the Bicycle Casino on the WPT. You have like 9.3-ish. Are you doing some math over there? What the hell is going on? Oh, and I was counting 9.3 million. I know, you got like a pen and paper and everything. Yeah, writing down stack sizes. 
Looking for something special? Go to WPTFoundation.org and check out the amazing auction items up for grabs. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Legends of Poker in Los Angeles. There are the beautiful freeways of Southern California. Well, they're beautiful to your ornament rush hour. <laughs> Lots of gridlock perhaps out there. There's also some gridlock going on here inside the casino as three players remain. Ryan Goendu has now taken the lead after winning that last pot. He's got 9.2 million. Jordan Christos in second place with 8.8 .8 million. And right now, Dan Highmiller with 3.3 .3 million. Let's go to the felt. The antis are 25,000. Blinds are 1 and 200. Big hand for Jordan Christos. Ace Queen with the button. 26 year old's got to love this. He's going to pop it up to 525. Ryan going out. And Dan Heimela with just a queen deuce also can't play. So a quick win there for Jordan Christos, the drummer, the poker player, the guy that quit college to play poker, takes down that pot. Well, that puts him and Ryan about tied for the lead right now. Well, speaking of Ryan, he looks down at the ace four offsuit here. He's going to raise it, make it 425,000 to go. But Dan right behind him with an ace eight. Pretty solid starting hand in a three handed poker game. Now he looks over at both his opponents, sees they both got about three times as many chips as he does. All in. And he's going for it right here. Moves all in with the ace eight offsuit. Wow. Great instincts by Dan Heimiller, the 51 year old. A big reputation around the poker circuit for years. Well, Jordan goes out. Can I? I don't know how much chips I have. Actually, never mind. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Three, seven. Just don't want to double up a guy like Dan Heimiller. <clears throat> Wow. Oh boy, he's put the chips out there. Wow. What a gamble by Ryan. I don't like this call for another $2.7 million. He doesn't like it either, as you can see. Yeah, you got his feet. I think it's three handed. That's okay. He could have been dominated like he is. His opponent could have had two sixes, two fives. He can't believe he made that call. He's kicking himself. He's going to have to get lucky in an eight right on the flop. Dan Heimiller clapping his hands together. Very happy with that flop, and why not? To win the pot, his opponent's got to hit two runners in a row. Two eight, fours, four, eight, six, seven. Eight, eight. And Ryan is a sickened puppy right now. He is destroyed by this, but he could still possibly have a long shot luck. No, ten of clubs, pairs the board. If an ace comes off, they would split this pot. Hey, ace and chop. Ryan begging for the long shot. Cocktails. <laughs> Damn, so happy, elated as we go down to the river. Well, it's a deuce. Dan Heimeller's going to double up. Well, it sure has, Vince. And what a crazy ride it's been for him. Looking at the WPT stack tracker, you can see Dan's been playing steady poker after starting this final table in sixth chip position. Dan is now in second place. He has surpassed tonight's starting chip leader, Ryan Goendu. But, Mike, you have to say our biggest story of the night is the current chip leader, Jordan Christos, who absolutely exploded into the lead when he eliminated Phil Locke in fifth place. Let's get back to the table where the action is back on Dan. And he has got a big one here. Ace King. He just doubled up the last hand. Now he looks down at this premium hand. He is feeling good right now. Jordan, our chip leader, folds his hand. Now Ryan. Yeah, looks down at a pair of fives. What do you do now? You just stumbled this guy up a second ago. Now he's raised it and you pick up a pair of fives. Well, that's the kind of hand you get super aggressive with sometimes. All in. Well, there it is. Call. Yeah, he's shoved and he's being called quickly. Well, it's a race situation, the under pair versus the over cards, and a massive race situation. I'm on tilt. Whoever Five. wins, it's going to be the chip leader. Five. Wow. Five, focus, people. Well, Ryan says, I'm on tilt. And we will see. Here comes the flop. Oh, boy. Ace and the king right on the flop. Dan Heimiller. High five in his fans. It's not over. Ryan can catch a five. Two runners to make a straight or two runners to make a flush. 
What a flop for Highmiller. Out in front with top two pair. Is Kentucky Fried Chicken still open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be Dad's lucky day, but he's got to dodge some things. And it's a heart. So now Ryan has four hearts. One more heart. One more heart. One more of these. A heart. Oh, boy. Well, Dan can't believe it. His opponent had two outs just one second ago. Now he's got multiple outs to win this pot. Any heart but the ace of hearts will win the pot for him, as well as a five. Everybody on their feet here at the Bicycle Casino. What drama on the World Poker Tour to kick off season 12. Well, can our local Ryan get lucky on the river? Here he comes. Four diamonds. Dan Miller clapping. He is playing heads up for this title, and he's the chip leader, Vince. Incredible. Ryan going to out in third place, and this local is going to take home 233000 well, Vince Ryan going to held the chip lead for a long time at this final table. And just like that, going to is going home. Oh, it's very exciting. Cameras, lights, all the crowd, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. It was it was fun for sure. I wish I would won that race though, but hey, it happens. With Ryan going to out in third place, it's now down to Jordan Christos and Dan Heimler to battle for the title. Heads up action from the Legends of Poker is coming up next on the WPT. There are 100,000 reasons to love ClubWPT.com because as a Club WPT VIP, you get the chance to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, where we are down to our final two players. While the Royal Flush girls, Danielle and Brittany, bring out the money that these guys are playing for, let's see what Jordan and Dan had to say on the break. Jordan, you've been preparing for this moment all of your life. How are your emotions coming into Heads Up? Non-existent. <laughs> really? To be honest, yeah. They have been almost the whole tournament. I'm just focused on what I have to do on the stack sizes, and you know, I'll worry about that afterwards. But you know, just tucking it away and focusing on the game. Well, your performance has been excellent. Best of luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. Dan, you came into this final table as a short stack. Now here you are, heads up. Did you think that when you started today that you would make it this far? No way. No? No. I thought it'd be less than 50% chance that I could get to uh, fourth place, much less heads up with a chip lead. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable luck. I bet. Well, I'm sure you're already feeling like a winner. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> The WPT Champions Cup is ready to have a new Legends name added to it. So let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. Well, thank you, Lynn. And right now, Dan Heimiller, the 51-year-old local out of L.A., 13,500,000. Jordan Christos, the 26-year-old, with about 7,8. Here we go. Call by Jordan, no raise. And Dan wants to see a flop. Here we go. Two junk hands. A7-4. Dan has picked up sevens. Well, he's going to check them. Dan very good at throwing his opponent rope. Jordan is going to bet 300000 No way Dan's going to put him on an ace because he didn't raise before the flop. So I don't see Dan going anywhere. Oh, no. He's going to re-raise. going to trap his guy. I don't like Dan Heimiller. He made a comment to me on the final table bubble last night. I took five seconds or more every hand to make a decision. I expected more from Dan Heimiller in terms of poker etiquette, being a veteran of the game. He's going to be the first one out. Wow. Well, with seven players last night, they had a little run in, it sounds like, Vince. And Jordan hadn't forgot it. That's obvious. No, he was wishing him that he got knocked out, but that's not the beat. Right now, Dan's the chip leader. And there's a little drama going on here between these two guys. Well, it sure is. There you see the prize money, what they're playing for. Winner over 613000 plus that coveted WPT title. Name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup. And look at this. Heimiller's picked up two aces. He's got a two-to-one chip lead. Picks up the aces, the weapons of mass destruction. 
in a heads-up battle. And look at this, he's just gonna call it. Well, he limps in. Intelligently, because Jordan only has a 10-3. Here's the flop, it's a 5-4 deuce, so now Jordan has an open ended straight. Action on Jordan. Well, he's gonna check, and I'm out of reaching for chips, and now, thinking, check. wow. He checked two aces there, surprised at that play. Just doesn't want to lose his man. Nine of spades on the turn. Dan doing anything and everything just to keep his guy around. That's better to lose your man than lose the pot. Yeah, but he's still pretty strong with aces and a straight draw potential. And look at this, he's gonna get a little money here. Jordan's gonna bet 275. And here comes the raise by Dan. Yeah, this is the time to step it up. Dan Heimiller's been playing poker 15 years longer than Jordan has been alive. What's interesting is Dan used to be a pizza delivery man, and of course, Jordan was a, a pizza delivery boy. The first time in the history of the tour, the two pizza delivery guys are fighting it out That's for a right. WPT title. That's you right. gotta love it. And the pizza guys are playing for big dough. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. And Jordan's gonna make the good lay down. And so Dan Heimeller, everything going right for him right now as he takes down that pot. Things are going his way right now. Dan with 14.3 million. Jordan, the 26-year-old, with 7 million. And as we go down the stretch here at the Bicycle Casino, right back at Jordan. And he's a little bitter about the way he perceived Dan to treat him last night. And he wants to get back at his man. Going to raise it here with a queen five offsuit, but High Miller has him out card again. Three bets it to 1.1 million, and that's probably going to do it for Jordan here. He just wants to punish this youngster. All in. Oh, but maybe not. Wow! Look at this move. An all in bet. You can't push around this young guy. How many how many millions do you have of about? What do you think? Is it is it? I can I guess I can take a look at your stacks. See one two three four five six seven. A little under seven. And still got a big chip lead if he folds. And Dan does the right thing. Lays down his hand. Jordan shows him the bluff. Jordan with a little salt in the wound, Mike. Well, look at Dan Heimiller. He's shaking his head. Just can't believe it. The guy moving his last chip to the queen five, but he did. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if Dan Hamiller goes on tilt after getting shown that bluff. That's the reason you show it to him. You hope he'll tilt off a little bit. Let's see if it happens. So Jordan is saying, that's for last night, Mr. Heimiller. You rushed me. That's for last night. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. The heads up action continues here. Well, Dan Heimeller currently well out in front. He's got 13.9 million in chips. Jordan Christos with 7.5 million. Action's on Dan with the button. He's got a 10-8 off suit. And he's gonna raise it to 600,000. And Jordan's gonna have a nice ace queen of diamonds. It's gonna be very nice because he's gonna play this hand. You can bet on that. I love it. Before the break, we saw Jordan bluffing with a queen high, and he showed Dan. Well, Dan's a longtime veteran poker player. Things like that are not supposed to bother him at the table. Well, Jordan has re-raised. He's going to 1.6 million. That's right, let's go. 1.6. And Dan will lay it down. Yeah, has to give it up there. Things are turning in the young man's way, perhaps. You still got your opponent three to two in chips. You're in good shape. No sense in doing anything silly. All right, but the blinds are going up to 125, 250 now. 
right back on Jordan. He's got a Jack. Oh, wow, Jack Ace. Well, big hand playing heads up. Jordan likes it. And he's going to raise. Yeah, 575, Dan. With a nothing hand, just a 3 5. Well, yeah, Vance, just seems like he's playing pots now because he wants to get his money back from that bluff a minute ago. Well, he's caught a three, but the ace also hits for Jordan. It's top pair for Jordan, bottom pair for Dan. He checks, and Jordan reaching for betting chips. Yeah, 675. Oh, and Dan doesn't believe him. Well, a snap call by Dan here with bottom pair. Going in deep here to the turn we go. Ada Hart comes off. That doesn't change things. Dan's going to check again. And the bet you expect. 1.6 this time with the aces and Dan. Oh, look at this, Vince. Well, he's getting stubborn here. Well, he sure is. You just wonder if the bluff that Jordan showed him is affecting Dan Highmiller, where he wants to get a bluff in and show his opponent a bluff. Well, that's a great point. He seems to be tilting off here. Oh, boy. I don't understand this. Double fisted. He is going to raise with just the threes. On. You're really going to go away with that? He's going to go all in. Well, he's saying if you can beat this, good luck to you. Dan cannot beat it. He's caught with his hand in the cookie jar, Vince. Jordan read him perfectly on this hand. And Vince, I believe that by showing Dan Highmiller that bluff a moment ago, it has put Highmiller on tilt. Okay, this time Jordan shows the aces. He was out in front. During the hand, they should be talking so much. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's too much. It's, it's way too much. I mean, there's talk on We're trying to play poker. Dan perturbed. It's ridiculous. But Somewhere the crowd on. was on his back there. Well, Vance, he should be angry at himself, not the crowd, that's for sure. You can't push this young 26-year-old drummer out of the way. He is now taking the chip lead. Bay 101 was my first shot at life-changing money. I had 140 big blinds with 27 players left and somehow managed to get 18th. My worst nightmare came true, and every day in this tournament, I was thinking about the mistakes I made before and just not making those same mistakes, just learning from it and doing everything right. Today, I'm gonna do it. The tension is rising as we get closer to crowning a new WPT champion. But right now, let's break down tonight's action with Tony Dunst in this edition of The Raw Deal. If you're hoping to achieve success in major live tournaments like the WPT, then you're going to need to combine sound strategy with mental fortitude. It's much easier to make the optimal decision when there's not life-changing money on the line and screaming friends in the stands. And while Jordan Christos is no amateur, this final table will be the first six-figure score of his career. Meanwhile, Dan Heimiller has cashed in a live tournament every year since 1992 in the television era of Steve Urkel. So will it be the freshman Jordan Christos or the veteran Dan Heimiller who cracks under the pressure? Let's break it down. We'll take a closer look at a hand that begins with Jordan raising the button with ace jack and Dan making a pretty loose call out of the big blind with 5-3 offsuit. Both players make a pair on the 7-ace-3 flop, which also gives Dan a backdoor straight and flush draw. But it's on the turn where things get interesting. When Dan checks on the eight of hearts, Jordan follows through with a bet of 1.6 million. I think most people in Dan's spot would fold at this point though perhaps some sticky players would call again with bottom pair. But Dan decides for door number three and check raises to 3.6 million. I still don't like his bluff for three reasons. One, Jordan probably isn't betting this turn very wide with bluffs and weak hands. Two, in the event Jordan has a hand as strong as top pair, it's unlikely he'll fold to the turn raise on a texture with so many draw possibilities. And three, Jordan could have a strong combination draw himself and may end up shoving the turn as a semi-bluff. But Dan still has a little fold equity if Jordan shoves the turn, even though Dan's getting a great price. 
As it turns out, the price didn't matter because Dan was never calling with his hand. Calling. After Jordan moves in and Dan fails to call, the crowd barrages him with taunts before he even folds his hand. And while Dan handles losing the chip lead in stride, he can't help but stare at the chips he bluffed away and wonder, did I do that? Well, Tony's right about that hand, and I'm sure Dan feels the same way. Jordan now with 17.6 million. Dan down to 3.8. What a turnaround we're seeing. Blinds are 150 and 300, $50,000 Andy. And all in. Look at this. He's going to go all in with King High. Let's take a look at Jordan's cards. Oh, boy. Call. He's got an ace nine of hearts and a quick call by Jordan, of course. Well, Jordan well out in front here with the ace nine. About a two to one favorite to win this pot and take this title right here, right now. The Christos Nation all excited. They know their man could win it right here. Man, so far in this heads up badly. Played Dan Heimiller like a snare drum. I can tell you that. But it's not over. Five cards to come for Dan Heimiller's poker destiny as well as Jordan's ace nine up against king four. And a nine hits on the flop. That is good for Jordan out in front with the nines. His parents and friends celebrate. Well, Dan's going to have to catch a king to take the lead. Two runners to make a straight or two running fours. Otherwise, he's going to be our runner up in this tournament. The crowd is chanting ace. They want to wrap this up in Hollywood. It could happen. Let's see the turn card. It's a queen. Now he's got straight possibilities. Dan I. Miller needs a king or a jack, which would give him a king eye straight to win this pot to stay alive. Otherwise, the former pizza delivery boy, the drummer, the man that quit college to play on the poker circuit, that is Jordan Christos, who will become our champion. Here he comes. Six of spade on the river. Jordan has taken his title. Only 26 years old from Palmdale, California. Jordan Christos is our champion. And the Christos Nation comes out of the stands. Everybody happy in the Christos Nation. He is in the mosh pit of friends. But before we talk to him, let's talk to the great Dan Heimiller. Dan. I didn't wait long enough for good cards. I got a little impatient and, and, and attempted uh, quite a few bluffs. It didn't work. Well, here we are at the Bicycle Casino with the Legends of Poker champion for season 12, Jordan Christos. Hey, Jordan. How are you feeling right now? Down to your first WPT title. Feels awesome. Like, <laughs> This is the best feeling ever. I actually, you know what? I don't know. I haven't fully absorbed it. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know in a few days or a week. Or <laughs> Jordan, in addition to all your cash you win tonight, you also get your name inscribed on the WPT Champions Cup. Once again, congratulations to our champion, Jordan Christos. Yeah! Lynn, back to you. Congratulations once again to Jordan Christos, the season 12 Legends of Poker Champion. Join us for our next stop when the WPT travels to Atlantic City for the always exciting Borgata Poker Open. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone here at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. The Poker Radar has zeroed in on the Eastern Seaboard and all eyes are on the Borgata, where millions are on the line and history is in the making. Tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He needs the extreme miracle. Oh! Wow! Unbelievable! Good evening, everyone.
everyone, I'm Lynn Gilmartin and welcome to the WPT's extensive coverage of the Borgata Poker Open. For the past four seasons, it has been the young East Coast pros who have torn apart the competition on their way to winning this title. Some may call it local advantage, others may call it skill, but one thing is certain, these players are all in it with a lot of heart. This season, a huge field showed up at Borgata and laid it all on the line to show that they have what it takes to become a WPT champion. The first thing you notice when arriving at Borgata is the noise. East Coast players don't hesitate to speak their minds, just like Borgata regular Travel Thomas did. And I hope the camera around and watch me crack this guy right here. As he held court at his day one A table. Never, ever, ever, ever blow. No, 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 not against the team, Meister. That's how you win a hand in America. I'm trying to educate America. I'm going to start charging for this education. This guy beat me so bad that I want to take a nap. It's important for players to keep focused, just like Kong Pham sitting to Travel's left, who didn't let the banter rattle him as he quietly won pot after pot. Don't not put me on the table with this guy tomorrow. Day 1A also saw the arrival of some new members of Season 12's Ones to Watch. Chicago's own Aaron Never Miss Massey and fresh off winning a World Series of Poker bracelet Lonnie Harwood. A late start was followed by an early elimination for Kara Scott. I have already busted out of day 1A. I only saw four hands. I think four hands and busting and four hands has got to be a record for me. And although he was too busy winning a preliminary event here at Borgata to buy in earlier, Season 11 WPT Player of the Year Matt Salzberg finally entered the tournament temporarily. Hustler knocked me out. How embarrassing is that? He uh, six out me on the river, so I will be buying in tomorrow, as, as is my custom. Poker pro Vanessa Selps found herself sitting next to a familiar player, her season six WPT Ladies Championship opponent, Nancy Todd. It's the first time she folded. Maybe I should have called. I had one of her fours. So we can trash talk. Oh, you can trash talk. It wouldn't bother me. I think we both get that, like, you know, it's a long time ago and stuff happens at the poker table, it gets heated sometimes, but, you know, things have changed a lot and yeah, we're totally doing it. The eliminations were racking up and with the day drawing to a close, players were fighting for pots because in addition to moving on to day two, a cash bonus would be awarded to the top two finishers of each day one for their performances. When players began counting up their chips, it was Kong Pham who sat atop the pile with over 191,000 in chips, and he was rewarded $5,000 for his efforts. Other notable finishers included defending champion Ben Hamnett, the always tough Vanessa Selbst, and fresh off his Legends of Poker victory, Jordan Christos. Of the 376 players that registered for day 1A, 166 would return for day two. Players who were eliminated would have a chance to re-enter the event on day 1B. Day 1B brought a new crop of players to Borgata, as well as some repeat visitors taking their second chance after busting the previous day. The field included a poker veteran, actor James Woods. You want me to act it? General Poker is very upset. You're, you're looking at one. <laughs> There's no acting involved. Along with a rookie player who had bought into his first WPT tournament, WPT founder Steve Lipscomb. Steve spoke with Royal Flush Girl Angelique about the experience. How many times have you played in this tournament already? All right, so I have never played in a World Poker Tour event that had a buy-in. The Invitational, okay. I was uh, very nice enough to invite myself every year to come How and play. Nice. <laughs> I'm a good guy that way. But this is the first time I've been in a buy-in event, and I gotta tell you, it's really awesome. I hope I at least make it today, too. Day 1B also brought the arrival of our final Season 12 one to watch, Danny Miami boss Seward. Did you get my amazing eyebrows in the picture? They're the best eyebrows in the building. While Danny was ready for his close-up, another one to watch, Jeff Gross, was sent to the rail. I feel a little, uh, the ones to watch curse gone so far, two for two and brutal, brutal ways of losing on the river and annoying spots. When registration finally closed, the official prize pool information was released. 
total entrants reached 1,189, eclipsing season 11's tally. The massive turnout created a total prize pool of over $3.8 million, with first place taking home over $825,000. Ace, King of Hearts first, Aces and Kings. Slap the nut flush, yes! And with that, we were introduced to Long Island native Norberto Camacho, who graciously provided his own play-by-play. -play. It's cute like you, babe, don't worry. If I had a name, it wouldn't be me. I'd be me. Also heating up, albeit a little more quietly, was season 10 ones to watch, Ebony Kenny. Ebony, who had busted out the previous day, was making the most of her second chance. Day 1B came to a close with 425 players still in the hunt, including WPT World Champion Scott Seaver and Season 11 Player of the Year Matt Salzberg. Staten Island local Anthony Castelli finished second in chips, receiving a $3,500 cash bonus. Good day. But it was Paul Volpe who would pocket an extra five grand in cash for taking the chip lead into Day 2. It's day two, that's when I usually shine. Let's go, baby. WPT. As the nearly 600 players took their seats on day two, they still had a long road ahead of them to reach the final table and add their name to the WPT Champions Cup. He's a billionaire, this guy. Somehow, the two biggest trash talkers in the room, Norberto Camacho and Will Faella, drew seats next to each other. And they didn't disappoint. You got to play it, not so much. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. Yeah, dude, I'm going to get, get it. it. Don't you worry. You could try to come get it, but I, I doubt that. I promise you, I'm going to I try. guarantee you I'm going to stack you in the next three, four, four, five hands. Guaranteed. Wow. After starting the day with a healthy stack, Ebony Kenny was having a little trouble gaining traction. I'm hanging in there, so I'm happy. I was down to like 45k, so I'm happy. I'm at like 1, 120, I think. I'm very, very happy. Come on. Ole. With players fighting for pots and eliminations piling up, next year, a man they call Lucky, Edwin Torres, was living up to his nickname. Dominated by his opponent's ace king, Edwin caught a miracle five on the river to double up. I'm just enjoying life every month. I might not be It beats being a farmer. A blueberry farmer by day, the soft-spoken Edwin was soon building up a huge stack. Day two saw the end of the line for season 12 ones to watch Aaron Massey, Danny Seward and Lonnie Harwood. The only remaining one to watch in the field was Christina Lindley, who was looking to double up. Ready to run it up. Got a good reship stack, so <laughs> looking forward to doing that. And although we were no longer watching Aaron Massey, he was still watching his brother Ralph, who was still alive. I'm out showers. Came back up here to check out my brother. He's still in, he's doing good. Uh, so I'm back to, back to the hotel room for me to, to sulk for a little bit. The day ended with 174 players still in the hunt for this WPT title. And former tennis pro Raj Borja was leading the way. Blueberry farmer Edwin Torres harvested a big stack good for third place. And after a slow start, Ebony Kenny rode the wave to fourth on the leaderboard. But a tenacious field still remained, including season 10 Borgata Poker Open champ Bobby Abudi, all looking for a slice of poker glory at Borgata. Everything went right today. As play got underway on day three, the field was still 62 eliminations away from the money bubble. Players settled in for the road ahead, hoping to avoid becoming one of the unfortunate few who had fought this long but leave empty-handed. Aaron's brother Ralph was hoping to keep the Massey name alive. Feeling good, feeling confident. Aaron, it's for you. The remaining one to watch in the field was Christina Lindley, who was also celebrating her birthday. It remained to be seen if it would translate into good fortune for the Nashville native. Although Ralph Massey busted before the money, there were two other brothers in the field quietly building up their stacks. Season 11 Five Diamond finalist Jeremy Kotler and his brother Zachary. With the money bubble approaching, the cards were not kind to the ladies. Woo! As it marked the end of the road for online pro D-Moon girl Danielle Anderson and Cherish Andrews, who had made a deep run in this event last season. With short stack players trying to squeeze their way into the money, a pot was brewing between two big stacks. After getting all the money in on the turn, Josh Levkov was stunned to see his set of jacks fall to the straight of his opponent, Daniel Howe. 
Josh left short of cashing, but the remaining 110 players would take home a minimum $7,123 for their efforts. With the money bubble burst, the players loosened up and the bust-outs came quickly. A number of familiar faces hit the rail. And Christina Lindley's birthday run good ran out when she could not improve in a hand against Vanessa Selbst. Her 49th place finish was worth nearly $11,000 and marked the first cash of the 12 one to watch. On to the next one and I'm happy to cash my birthday. I'll be in Paris, so hopefully I'll make a deep run. Reigning player of the year Matt Salzberg's tournament life was on the line when he went all in with Ace-5 and was called by the Ace Queen of North Carolina native Eric Fields. Both players hit their kicker on the flop, but Matt failed to improve on the turn and river and was sent to the hashtag showers. <laughs> Joining Matt at the payout desk was a disappointed Ebony Kenny and overall day one chip leader Paul Volpe. With big names falling, Noberto Camacho was not lacking in confidence. Today is like a really flawless day. At the end of the day, 36 players still remained and would return to play day four. Day 1A chip leader Kong Pham had regained the lead with over 2.5 million. Vanessa Selps with over 1.7 million in chips, good for fifth place. And the Kotler brothers, who looked to become the first pair of siblings to make a WPT final table. It's survival of the fittest here at the Borgata Poker Open. Find out who makes it to the final table when we return on the WPT. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Atlantic City, where the World Poker Tour's coverage of the playdown to the Borgata Poker Open final table continues. Day four saw the final 36 players settled into an intimate corner of the poker room to battle for a seat at the televised WPT final table. The atmosphere in the room was noticeably different from the previous days, with quiet focus taking over the field. Play got off to a rough start for blueberry farmer Edwin Torres, whose luck ended when he ran his pocket sixes into the pocket aces of Kong Pham. Back to the farm, do my farm work. Rhode Island native Anthony Zeno ended poker pro Mac Lance's deep run when he eliminated him in 23rd place. Anthony, like Vanessa Selbst, had gone to law school and passed the bar exam, but decided to pursue poker instead. But it was Kong Pham dealing out the poker justice as he won pot after pot, busting young pro Jake Schwartz in 21st place while building a monster stack throughout the day. Well, With so much at stake at this late stage in the tournament, Royal Flush Girl Tuba caught up with brothers Zach and Jeremy Kotler. So I just want to know between the two brothers, which one is the better player? I don't know, I guess we'll have to wait and see. So do you guys kind of keep an eye on each other, watch what's going on and check between the hands? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're, we're trying to set history here. Not, not while we're in <laughs> hand, but afterwards we look at each other. Perfect. Zach was trying to make the most of his short stack when he went all in with King Queen but he was called by the ace king of Eric Fields. After a 10 high flop, Zach was looking for a queen or running cards to save him. No help on the turn and the river sent Zach to the rail. Yeah. Where his first thoughts were on the sibling rivalry he had with his brother Jeremy. He outlasted me, so that's a little stinger. <laughs> Would have liked to be in the final table with him. And after an impressive run in which he was never at a loss for words. I need to send you packing. Let's go. Get it all in with me right now. Let's go. Norberto Camacho was eliminated in 14th place. The usually talkative Norberto had a hard time putting it all in perspective. So, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Legends of Poker runner-up Dan Heimiller would be the next to fall in 13th place. And when Kong Pham eliminated young pro Alex Rocker in 11th place, it sent his chip count north of 10 million and the final 10 players combined to one table. Vanessa Selbst was sitting second in chips to Kong, but she narrowed the gap when she eliminated Cliff Josephy in 9th place and Richard Tatalovich in 8th place leaving us just one player away from the final six. It was late into the night when Jeremy Kotler called Daniel Howes all in. Daniel was at risk, 
and his ace king was behind the pocket kings of Jeremy. No help on the board, knocked Daniel out in seventh place. And the Borgata Poker Open final table was set. Back, got another shot at it, absolutely, very excited. Kong Pham would lead the way, followed by two lawyers turned poker pros Vanessa Selbst and Anthony Zeno. Jeremy would make his second WPT final table and rounding out the table were two young pros, David Randall and Eric Fields. Making your way through a field of nearly 1,200 entrants has got to be draining both physically and mentally. So I can only imagine the level of fatigue setting in for our final six players. But the journey is far from over in this quest for a place on the WPT Champions Cup. For more analysis on tonight's play, we turn to WPT's very own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Now, Mike. Superstar Vanessa Selbst definitely has the most experience in the spotlight of the remaining players. How do you rate her chances here tonight? Well, Lynn, make no mistake about it. Vanessa Selbst is a poker superstar, and I really like her chances tonight. Here's why. She's got $7.5 million in career earnings. Nobody else at the table has 800000 She's also starting out in good chip position tonight, starting in second place. Now, I think Vanessa is going to win tonight and become the first woman in history to ever win a WPT open event, meaning a buy-in event. Wow. And Vince, who do you think is going to give Vanessa the most trouble at the table? Well, Lynn, in poker, you really have to follow the money. So let's go to seat number six. And sitting there is Kong Pham, 29 years old, out of Vietnam. His first ever final table. He's very aggressive. And you know what? They call him King Kong. That's his nickname. And I believe King Kong tonight will jump over the Empire State Building, probably get the girl, and probably take home this title. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And just before the players took their seats, we had a chance to check in with Vanessa. You know, I got to play smart, play well. I've been playing well all tournament. I feel really good about my game. Obviously, I have to get lucky, get some good cards, avoid some bad beats. Um, but just hopefully just keep doing what I've been doing and hopefully take it down. The Borgata Poker Open final table is about to get started. So I'll throw it back to Mike and Vince for the call of the action. All right, thank you, Lynn. And he's going to be 10,000. Blinds are 50 and 100,000. OK, there you see the chip count. Kong Pham out in front. Behind him, Vanessa Selps, and that's what they're playing for. The winner going to take home over $825,000. The cards are flying around the table. We are getting started. And first to play is Anthony Zeno. Anthony, 32-year-old pro out of Cranston, Rhode Island. He will not play Vanessa Selps quickly going out. David Randall not going to play. And now we're on to Jeremy Cutler with the button and a miserable-looking 7-4 of diamonds. Yeah, it looks like he's going to make a button raise here. That makes it 225000 to go. Right behind him, though, Kong Pham, the chip leader with ace-3, has made the call. And look at this, Eric Fields with a big hand. Lots of people have a certain playing style and they just want to go with that and be one player. But that's not really a winning strategy in my opinion. You have to be able to adapt to different players, different stack sizes, and different situations. Hold on. Well, Eric starting out in sixth chip position, still has over three million in chips, moving all in right here <coughs> with the ace king. It certainly does. Jeremy Cotler won't play. Kong Pham saying no moss. So first hand going to Mr. Eric Fields. Yeah, nice all-in bet by Eric there. Takes down the pot. All right, just getting started at Pagoda in Atlantic City. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Borgata. Here it is, you know, my first event. I'm making the final table, going into it with high expectations and no regrets. Poker is beautiful because it's a lot of logic balanced with the psychological factors of keeping cool. I just embrace that. I've been playing this game a long time, and I feel like I'm equipped and I'm ready to take these guys on. Make a WBT final table is everything to me. It's like a dream. It's amazing. There's a lot of tough competition out there, very good players, and I'm just hoping today's my day. Becoming a WPT champion would be incredible. I'm always going for the win. You don't see a lot of min caches on my resume. The title means everything to me, and I'd be extremely honored to be a member of the WPT Champions Club. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at Brigada, the land of saltwater taffy. That is Atlantic City, having a great time. 
as six players remain. Well, there you see the graph of the chips in play. Obviously, Kong Pham has got a third of them in good shape right now with six players left. Let's go down to the money pit. David Randall, poker pro out of Columbus, Ohio. First to play, he folds his hand. Jeremy Kotler getting out of his way. Kong Pham now. Well, he's an aggressive player. Going to raise it up here with the 10 of clubs. Makes it 2.25 to go. Eric Fields, though, not going to go anywhere. He's making the call with a king-queen. Zeno out, and Vanessa now with a pair of deuces. Looks intrigued. Well, I can't imagine she's going to fold, Vince. She's probably contemplating possibly raising because she plays so aggressive. But she does just make the call, so here we go. Three-way action here. Here come the first three cards, and it is a king and an eight. King eight, three, two hearts. Action on Vanessa. Kong hitting eights, but checking. Kings for Eric Fields, and he's the guy with the real hand at the moment. 22 years old out of Greensboro, North Carolina. He will make the bet, 325. Vanessa out. Well, Kong didn't bet the two eights, but he's gonna call with them. Looking to get lucky against Eric Fields. Let's go to the turn. When he does get lucky, and eight hits, three of a kind for Kong. Well, there's also three hearts out there now, though. Well, Kong is going to check. David also checks. And Eric wisely checks right behind him. And now a queen comes off, but there's four hearts out there. Neither player has a heart, of course. But Kong bets a half a million without the flush, just on the three eights. But Eric has made kings and queens here, Vince. I know. Might be a tough laydown to make here, but you don't like seeing the four hearts. Call. Now he's got to make this call. Eric well, Eric call. calls with the kings and queens. Sees he got outdrawn on the turn. Kong, Kong Pham going to take down this pot to extend his chip lead. Eight of wow, King Kong. He's married with one daughter, born and raised in Vietnam, now living in Naples, Florida. <laughs> He's the chip leader. He's on a good roll right now. There's the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar. And you know who's at the end of the bar is the creator of the World Poker Tour, Steve Lipscomb. Well, he's been around all week, Vince. Just sort of been on a vacation here, just laying back and taking the congratulations from all the players for starting the World Poker Tour. All right, on to the next hand, couple folds, and now Vanessa Selps with a king five of spades. Makes it 200,000 to go. Makes the men raise. David Randall will not play. Jeremy Cutler looks down at an attractive ace nine of hearts. Yeah, because he's out of position, he just calls here instead of three bets. Jeremy's a consultant, semi-professional poker player out of Cleveland, and here is the flop. He hits his nines. Yeah, Jeremy in Ohio State Buckeye. He's going to check. Nothing for Vanessa. And she checks behind him. A three of hearts on the turn. So Jeremy's got top pair, top kicker. Loves his hand after Vanessa checks on the flop. And he's going to bet. Certainly is. 375 to go. And what will Vanessa do? She's got zip and pip. Wow. Nothing there. Well, this is what makes her so tough, Vince. Ooh. Look at this. She checks the flop. She raises on the turn. No hand. No draw. I raise. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Jeremy says re-raise. Wow. Well, I can see him calling here. I am shocked that he would re-raise. Just in case she flopped a set of eights or did have the overpair. And she is stunned, Mike. He would be in dire straits right now. But as it is, the gig is up for Vanessa here. <laughs> she has no hand and no draw and has been re-raised by Jeremy. But wait a second. Oh. She, she's going to call this. Wow. Well, Vince, she's not calling because she's going to try to make a hand to win the pot. She's going to try to take the pot away from Jeremy on the river. Seven of spade comes up. Jeremy checks. Expect a bet here by Vanessa, but she's going to quickly check. Wow, I am stunned by this check, Vince. Essentially, she's just waving the flag, gives up the pot. I thought she'd make a bold bet at the river after calling that raise on the turn with no hand and no draw, but changed her mind. Jeremy taking down that pot. Oh, I think she was waiting for a club to come out and then make a big one. Didn't happen. So the consultant from Cleveland, Ohio, Jeremy Kotler, taking this one down. 
This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. You know, we're at Brigada, and we've been reminiscing about all the great shows at Brigada. The final tables have been amazing. And if you're a Club WPT VIP member, you too can access the vaults and take a look at these shows, relive them with us. Well, that's right, Vince, but that's just one of the benefits that they get by becoming a member of Club WPT. You also get to play unlimited poker, and you can win your share of over 100000 in cash and prizes every month, plus win your entries into live WPT events. ClubWPT.com. Check it out. Sign up today. I think you'll like it. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Let's get back to the felt. Well, there you see the chip counts of the players. Kong Pham well out in front with over $12 million in chips. He is dabbing it right now. All right, cards being dealt first to play. Anthony Zeno. And Anthony, a poker pro, 32 years old, won't play. Vanessa also going out. Over to David Randall. He looks down at a junk hand, goes out. Jeremy Cotler now with the button. Let's take a peek at his cards. It's a queen king of hearts. Pretty attractive hand. Will raise the 200,000. Kong Pham with Ace King just calls here, Vince. How do you like that? Now Eric Fields wow. with the real hand pair of jacks. Oh, boy. We're going to see some fireworks here. He's on a short stack of 1.6 million. All in. Yep, yep, he's going all in. Can't blame him for going all in here with two jacks. Certainly is. Everybody would do the same. Now Kotler is king, queen of hearts. And he's serious. He's saying, how much is it? Yeah, it's about another 1.4 million to him. But... It's 1.6 total. That's right. I call. Whoa, right, he's going to make this call. Kong Pham now. I'm all in. Kong. All in. And he goes all in over the top. Now, Eric can't believe it, but now Jeremy Kotler's the guy caught in the pickle here. Why are you such an animal, man? It's King Kong. Damn right he is. He called the $1.4 million bet, and now has been re-raised all in. Well, Vince, he's in shock how Kong right, played this hand, but I don't see how you can call all your money with the king-queen here. Lays it down. Kong fam going to show his ace-king, and we got a big race situation here for Eric Fields' poker life. So Eric Fields yeah. got to feel pretty good about his chances. Eric Fields' business degree from University of Alabama would like to get a good flop, and he gets a pretty good one. Well, 9.75, so far so good for Eric. He has got a chance to triple up here. Deuce. All right, here we go with the turn. Oh, boy. Six of diamonds comes off. Interesting. So Kong needs an ace, a king, or any diamond to win the pot. I'll take an eight. Good job, Fog. Never <laughs> an eight that's not the eight of diamonds. They would split the pot. <laughs> well, right now it's roll tide for Eric Fields. And three up. But he's got a lot of cards to dodge and stay dodge alive. This many outs. If you had like one out, I'm dead. But this many outs, I'm, I can dodge. The youngest player at the oh, table boy. staying cocky. Right, let's go to the river. Let's see what we got. Can he stick around and double up? Down to the river we go. It's an eight. Oh, wow. What tough luck for Eric Fields right there. Vince, he'd have tripled up, had over $5 million in chips if he wins that pot. Been right in the thick of things to take this title, but that is poker. Eric Fields drowning at the river there when the ace pops off at the river to give Kong the victory. Well, Eric Fields' fields of dreams are over right now. He'll take home $168,000. Let's go see what he has to say. It feels great. You know, my, my friends and family have been great the whole way supporting me. And, you know, it's, it's been a great ride. And unfortunately, it didn't get my way. But hopefully, uh, hopefully the next time it will. Down to five players, Mike. Yes, what can you say? King Kong making every move exactly right so far. He is flying through the jungle. Hasn't missed a vine yet, I can tell you that. <laughs> King Kong, Kong Pham, the 29-year-old out of Vietnam, says he takes his poker winnings and sends it back <clears throat> to the old country for his family. And he's got a big chance of winning nearly a million dollars here tonight. Kong Pham nearing half the chips in play here. 
All right, we've lost one now in this hand. Anthony Zeno out. Vanessa Selps with a solid mid pair. Pair of sevens makes it 200,000 to go. David Randall with an uneventful 6 2 spoon play. Kotler getting out of their way. Kong Pham will speculate with a jack five. Well, why not, Vince? The guy is running hot, winning every pot. Let's gamble. Flop comes up ace queen eight. Well, not a good flop for Kong there, but Vanessa not happy with it either. There's three over cards out there. Goes check, check. Now an ace on the turn, pairs the board. Kong looks like he's giving this up. He's checking again. Well, Vanessa's starting to feel like her two sevens are the best hand, but this guy checks twice in a row. So she's going to bet. Kong goes out. Vanessa Selps takes down the pot. Well, Mike, as we take a quick break in the action, let's tell our viewers what's been happening on the World Poker Tour since our last televised event at the Legends of Poker. Well, Vince, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tampa, Florida, held a WPT regional where Scott Anderson emerged victorious and took home over $68,000 for the win. That is beautiful, Scott. Well done. And if you'd like to come out on the World Poker Tour and play one of these tournament events, go to worldpokertour.com and check out the complete tournament schedule. All right, back down to the felt at Pagata. The Annies have gone up to 20,000. Blinds are 61 20. Quick fold by Zeno. Vanessa Selps. What a talented young player she is. Wow, throws away an ace high. That's unlike Vanessa. <laughs> well, I mean, she picked up that the man on her left, David Randall's got a little mid pair, pair of eights, and he will raise with that 275. David Randall, they call him big time. 26-year-old pro out of Columbus, Ohio. Codler out, and now King Kong with a nothing 10-3, but he's already invested. And look at this. He's going to reinvest, makes a 625 with a junk hand. Well, Kong really thinks he's running well now. Going to raise with this hand. Back on David Randall. On. Yeah. King Kong's going to get a dose of his own oh, medicine he here. He says all in. An all in bet there over the top by David Randall. Says you can beat these eights. Good luck to you. I don't believe it. Kong goes out. David Randall takes down we the pot. we got players playing with nothing here tonight. Bluffing the way to victories. I'm Angelique, one of the Royal Flush Girls. Stick around for more World Poker Tour. Borgata is by far the best casino on the East Coast. Playing here is just perfect for poker. It's definitely one of my favorite stops. I feel comfortable here. I really believe that Borgata is one of the best places to play poker. It's a beautiful casino. Everybody here has treated me extremely <laughs> I love coming here. It's a really well-run tournament, and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Well, Vanessa is right about that. Players love coming here to Borgata, and why not? Such a beautiful property, and they do run poker tournaments. Fantastic. Five players remain going after big dollars here tonight. And Kong Fam has over 15 million in chips. So right now, it's the King Kong show, Vince. Actually going to Vanessa Selps out of Brooklyn, New York. Quick fold by her. David Randall. I do hope so. Come on, give me Poker Pro will not play this. Jeremy Cutler. And he is on the button. Looks down at a 10-6 offsuit. Going to throw it away. So, battle of the blinds here. On to Kong Pham. The chip leader with ace four makes it 250 to go. And now Anthony Zeno. You got king seven offsuit, and you have position on this guy, but still, you know he can raise with any two cards, so you call him with the king high, and you flop two sevens. Yep, and Kong with the fours has checked. It is a habit. You know, if I something like... Anthony, as you can see, has middle pair with top kicker and is going to bet. He bets 300,000. Kong. Okay. Kong, very good nature to the table. Going to make a, a loose call with a little yeah. pair. He's got bottom pair. And we're turning. Check. And he makes three fours on the turn. Vince, we saw him do this a little bit ago when he had two eights. His opponent had two kings. He had three eights on the turn to win that pot. Oh, boy. Kong has dug the hole, put the branches and the twigs over it, waiting for the sucker to fall in. And it has just happened as he you know, bets his sevens. Anthony bets 600,000. And as you can see, he's about to get check raised. And that's exactly the case. And right now, Anthony giving himself a lecture. Why did I bet these sevens? If the guy check raises me, I can't call. I have to throw my hand away, whether he's bluffing or not. Anthony Zeno went to law school 
Loves science and law. Says if he does well here, he's gonna pay off some of his student loans. Oh boy. He won't be able to pay them all off in case he makes this call. But he doesn't. He lays the hand down. Very wise by him. Kung Pham with the three of a kind. Gonna rake in that pot, extend the chip lead. Well, Vince, Kong Pham used to be a nail technician. And I can tell you right now, he is putting a manicure on all these players at this table. <laughs> all right, on to the next hand. A couple quick falls around to Vanessa. And Vanessa, of course, went to law school at Yale. And she is going to raise this with an ace five. Makes it 250 to go. David Randall gets out of her way. And now Jeremy Kotler with the pair of nines. Well, he's in the big blind with two nines. Vanessa going to raise on the button with about any two cards. Jeremy knows it, so definitely going to three bet here, I would guess. He's going to mark an injury out of John Carroll University in Ohio. A shrewd poker player, and he is going to re-raise. Sure he is. Bang. 7.25 to go. Jeremy, what can I say about Jeremy? He was on the short stack. Uh, I think he played it very well. He was cautious when he had to be. You know, now he's got a little bit more chips, and I think he'll probably be dangerous if he gets a stack. Oh, look at this, Vince. Vanessa is going to four oh. bet here with the ace rag and a snap all in bet by Jeremy oh. and a snap fold by Vanessa. Complete disappointment there for Vanessa Selps. She thought she could manhandle Jeremy. That's not the way it's done here. Jeremy, too tough for that. Well, that you see, Vanessa wells her emotions on her sleeves, looking all around, not happy with her play there. Five players remain here at Vagata. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Keeping up with the latest news on your favorite players and tournaments can be a real grind. ClubWPT.com makes it easy with online access to poker magazines like WPT Poker. Get all the poker you want at ClubWPT.com. Welcome back to Borgata and the WPT, where five players are battling it out to beat this season's Borgata Poker Open champion. Let's send it back to Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten to check the chip counts and the call of the game. Thank you, Lynn. As you can see, Kong Pham, originally out of Vietnam, is the chip leader with over 16 million. Yeah, he is in great shape, Vince. I have almost three times as many chips as the guy in second place right now. Action on Anthony Zeno. Fold. Yep, a quick fold by Anthony. Vanessa Selps now. She is betting with nothing here tonight. With just Jack Nine, she makes it 250. Vince, what about this? Anthony and Vanessa, both graduates of law school, playing poker as a profession. David Randall out. Kotler out. Kong Pham might be more stubborn. He's already in the big blind, and he will make this call with an 8-5 of spades. I want to see a flop with that hand. Amazing the hands Vanessa plays. And the flop comes up 7-6-5. Oh, nice flop for Kong. He's got a pair and open and straight draw. Vanessa sees the danger in check, that check. situation. And a jack on the turn, Mike. Well, Vanessa's taking the lead now with two jacks. But look at Kong's hand. Open and straight draw, flush draw, and a pair. And he is going to bet 425000 Vanessa now with the top pair. Possible straight draw two. I'm just going to call. Does not raise with the two jacks. Too many hands could beat her. Down to the river. Can Kong hit here like he's been doing all night? Nope. Ten of clubs. Check. Well, Kong quickly checks on the river. Will Vanessa go in for the value bet with the jacks on the end? Of course she does. Oh, very impressive here by Vanessa. That's 875. Good flop, good turn. Bad river. Flop, pay open and then turn, pay open and then flush or. Kong's <laughs> explaining his hand, how wonderful his possibilities were. Well, in the meantime, that means you're throwing I'll it away when you give that dissertation. He is good natured. I'll give him that as he folds the hand. Well, Vanessa picks up a pot. She's happy to get one. There's Vanessa's newlywed wife, Miranda, in the front row. Married earlier this year. That's right. Vanessa's done nothing but win millions since I got married. All right, Kong Fan <laughs> with a big hand picking up Ace Queen of Spades just like that. And he makes it 250 to go. Zeno out. Vanessa also not going to play. And now David. He will not play that mess. Yeah. Ooh. Jeremy now looks at Ace King in the big blind. He's definitely going to play. 800. 
Yep, makes it 800,000 to go. And this could spell a lot of trouble for Kong Fam. All in. Cool. All in. He says all in. Insta call there by Jeremy Cutler. Well, Jeremy has him dominated. If he wins this pot, he'll be in second chip position. If he loses it, he's out in fifth place. Wow. A big opportunity here for Jeremy to double up. Great position here with five cards to come. King Kong usually comes out ahead tonight so far. Will he get lucky here with the queen? Not there. It's a 985 on the flop. The spirit suits. Very good flop for Jeremy. He'll dodge two runners to make a straight or a queen. Uh, the crowd on its feet right now. Well, there you saw Jeremy's brother, Zach, who finished 15th in this tournament. Great showing by him as well. Yeah, the board pairs nines. Now, if an eight or five comes off, they would split this pot. Three of hearts. Kong needs a queen to win the pot. King Kong, amused at this, keeps his smile. Down to the river we go. He's got over 20 million in chips prior to this pot, man, so it's easy to smile. You don't have to be worried. Jeremy, on the hand, very worried. Kong hit the queen. It's an ace. It's an ace. Jeremy is going to outkick him. The big kicker is going to play. Ace is up for the king kicker. Going to beat Ace is up for the queen kicker. Jeremy Cotler has once again vaulted back into second place at the final table. Oh, boy. Kicks King Kong where it hurts. Oh, you're right, Vince. He's like the airplanes when they were shooting King Kong down from the top of the Empire State Building. Well, that hand signals the end of our first hour of coverage from the Brugada Poker Open. But before we go, Mike and Vince, please sum up tonight's play. Well, certainly you got to say Jeremy, who's holding second chip position, things are going very well for him. But Kong Pham.